Every year around this time, many of the hundreds of thousands of Zimbabweans who live in South Africa make their way back home. Over the holiday period, families and friends reunite and the country's struggling economy gets desperately needed influx of foreign currency. Not this year, though. In a shock announcement, Zimbabwe's government has effectively closed the border to ordinary travellers. According to spokesperson Nick Mangwana, anyone coming into Zimbabwe must quarantine in a hotel for 10 days at their own expense. He says this emergency measure is designed to prevent the spread of the Omicron COVID-19 variant. The measure has thrown holiday plans into chaos because few people can afford the time or the money to quarantine. This is the second dose of bad news for Zimbabweans living in South Africa in a matter of weeks. Last month, South Africa's government announced that it would not renew the Zimbabwean special permit at the end of this year. The permit was introduced in 2010 to legalize an influx of refugees, overwhelmingly ordinary people fleeing economic hardship and political persecution and has allowed more than 200,000 Zimbabweans to live and work in South Africa. Now, in what has been widely criticized as a populist decision, South Africa says they must go back to where they come from and giving them a grace period until the end of 2022 to do so. This decision is being challenged in court. Journalist Tapiwa Zivira is keeping a close eye on developments and now joins us via Zoom from Harare. Tapiwa, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of the program. No, it's a national um, uh, thing that uh, Zimbabweans do all over the world. Uh, they say, Kuyenda Kumusha, going home. Um, and this year, that's not going to happen, it looks like. Yes, yes, certainly, because um, the restrictions that government has put in place um, are likely to deter many from uh, crossing the border because apart from the um, uh, restrictions that they will face when they have to quarantine, um, the fear of having to go back to South Africa um, and maybe not being allowed to go back in um, is mounting. And um, with the communications that we've had with some of the people that are in South Africa, they've hinted that they would rather stay there so that they will try to work on the reapplication process uh, whilst they are in South Africa. So how has government rationalized this? I mean, you know, we're talking, we're having conversations about um, uh, apartheid, travel apartheid, uh, that have been shared across the continent, it seems as if that this could be a ban without banning. Yeah, certainly it's, uh, in, it's an indirect ban. Uh, and I would like to believe that um, on the part of the government of Zimbabwe, um, the strict restrictions that they put in on uh, retaining residents um, is more like uh, saying that we cannot manage um, you coming back here because we do not have enough facilities uh, to deal with um, the, the possibility of um, uh, cases of COVID-19. And um, I believe that it is also because that um, the government of Zimbabwe has not managed to deal with COVID-19, to spend um, resources on COVID-19. So they're just putting the burden back on the people. And then also on the side of um, the South African side, it is more like a double tragedy because these are also the Zimbabweans who are not sure of their continued stay, stay in South Africa, uh, considering that uh, the permit, permits will not be renewed um, uh, after the end of 2022. Mm. So what are the direct consequences for Zimbabwe? I would imagine one of them is a heavy hit in terms of tourism and much badly needed foreign currency. Yes, certainly, because um, it is very well known that uh, in December and January there is um, a very uh, high 
um, influx of um, South African land here. That is because returning Zimbabweans will not just come in, but also will come in with foreign currency. And uh, we also know that uh, many of the Zimbabweans that are in South Africa and other countries um, really look after uh, the Zimbabweans that are here. So the fact that they will not be able to travel is a very serious, it will have a serious consequence on the economic stability of Zimbabweans that depend on them back here in Zimbabwe. And in addition to that, uh, it will also um, affect um, some of the uh, logistics, I would like to believe, that Zimbabweans come back home to deal with uh, during uh, the December holidays. So I think it will have a lot of consequences, not just on the livelihoods of Zimbabweans, but also on the tradition um, that has been long held where we have Zimbabweans here in Zimbabwe uh, relying on Zimbabweans living mm. in South Africa. And I suppose, it, you know, it, it's, it, it, the consequences are, are quite far and wide uh, because there will be businesses that rely on this period of time uh, and then they start to recover slowly until maybe about Easter. Now they've got this long gap between now and maybe the next holidays around Easter and Independence. Yes, certainly. Um, it will have a lot of uh, economic consequences, not only also for Zimbabwe, but also considering that in South Africa, there is also a huge wave of Zimbabweans shopping uh, so that they carry goods back home to Zimbabwe. Mm. And without that, um, there won't be as much uh, in terms of uh, businesses in South Africa making uh, some money. We also have um, businesses that transport uh, people, that is buses. We also have even uh, businesses that transport goods. Because remember that South Africans re returning to Zimbabwe do not only come with groceries, but even with some of the, um, uh, I would say, home equipment, home furniture and other things. So this uh, will affect a, a lot of um, business and not just at a small scale, but I think at a very large scale. Let's talk about the actual facilities that they're supposed to quarantine in. Have they taken the similar stance as the United Kingdom where they'll designate certain um, hotels that you must go to and pay for yourself? Or what does self-quarantine mean? Um, I, for the uh, returning residents, I think from Botswana and, uh, and South Africa and maybe other neighboring countries, they are required to self-quarantine. But uh, by self-quarantining, uh, we believe that it's government not being able to take responsibility for ensuring that uh, not just that uh, people uh, who are returning get uh, adequate health care, but it's more like leaving people on their own. And um, the history that we have had with self-quarantine uh, is that uh, either they are taken to um, school facilities which are not adequate, wow. or they are asked to go home and self-isolate. Uh, but again, it's also in a situation of the government that is not taking responsibility for its obligation to provide health facilities and adequate um, health, health care. All right. So already I'm seeing a problem in terms of enforcement because I get off the plane, I'm a returning resident, and they say go home and self-quarantine. How do they check? How can they check if everybody is at home and hasn't left the house? It's certainly the biggest problem, first of all, to check if... Uh, somebody's at home, but also to check if someone is not interacting with other people. But again, um, we also see a scenario in the situation where in Zimbabwe, the healthcare generally is not even um, that top notch. The enforcement of COVID-19 regulations has not been uh, done in a way that ensures mm -hmm. uh, citizens um, get healthcare, but rather it has been done in a more uh, would say police and military way. So you'd see that um, when people are asked, if people are asked to self-quarantine um, or to self-isolate, it is 
pretty much a case of them just being on their own. And uh, it is not even easy to enforce, uh, if not impossible, mm. because they cannot be able to trace um, the, the people. And in addition, they are already failing to maintain the current uh, COVID-19 situation uh, in Zimbabwe for those that are, are, are here in Zimbabwe. Many Zimbabweans here in South Africa are upset, understandably, about this uh, new ruling. How are people feeling inside Zimbabwe about this new law? What's the general sentiment? Uh, I would like to believe there is um, a, a very deep sense of despondency, a very deep sense of disappointment, uh, because um, these are Zimbabweans who were, not, were looking forward to see their relatives not just for the uh, things that they bring, but also uh, because it has been long for them. Mm. And for, for some of them, it has been uh, even before the COVID-19. They have not been able to travel pre -COVID, from pre-COVID-19. And to have them not able to travel or to have these kind of restrictions um, is a very big disappointment. We also see a situation where uh, Zimbabweans here in, in, in uh, Zimbabwe are also wondering what is the, is the fate yeah. of their own relatives who are in South Africa, who are on this premise that are not going to be extended beyond um, 2022. So you would see that this is a situation where people are thinking of their relatives who have been in South Africa for a decade and their future hangs yeah. in the balance. So. It's really a, a situation that is not good. Uh, do you think the authorities are looking at the science, looking at other countries? Um, I mean, on one level, we're hearing that um, this Omicron perhaps is highly transmissible, but the symptoms that people are experiencing seem to be milder at this stage. That's on the one level. And then on the other, by the time you discover a variant, it's already been circulating quite a bit uh, in society. And with the movement between South Africa and Zimbabwe, I think even if they haven't actually tested a person... Sorry, I lost you there. Uh, OK. Uh, I was just saying, do you think that the authorities are looking at this uh, and looking at the science around uh, Omicron? Uh, are you still there? There we go. All right. OK, let me try again. <laughs> I was just saying, do you think that the... Authorities are looking at this problem uh, through the science, which suggesting that A, um, uh, Omicron, whilst it might be highly transmissible, at the moment what seems to be the case is that people are experiencing milder symptoms than uh, previous variants. And then secondly, by the time you discover the variant, it's probably been circulating quite a bit in the area. And then if you consider the movement of people between Zimbabwe and South Africa, it's hard to imagine that there is no Omicron in Zimbabwe, even if it hasn't been tested. Uh, I would like to believe that um, government is not using science uh, because, first of all, it is very ironic that the government of Zimbabwe puts uh, in place uh, quite some strict restrictions at a time when the whole of Southern Africa was uh, going against the decision by other countries that, like the UK to ban um, uh, travelers from Southern Africa. So it's more like the government uh, say turning right and indicating left because they should really have a situation where there is even better um, uh, communication and better um, arrangements between countries that are neighboring, considering the high volume of people who travel between Zimbabwe and South Africa, and also considering the business value that Zimbabwe and South Africa has between each other, not just for travelers who come for holidays, but also for even for the um, uh, small scale traders who travel in between the countries. So I really believe this is not based on science, but rather maybe a government that is not sure of its um, adequacy to respond to a situation that may um, blow out of its proportion, considering that the health uh, sector in Zimbabwe is just in shambles. 
Tatenda, we're going to have to leave it. Amita Piwa, we're going to have to leave it there. Um, thank you so much indeed for that update. Uh, Tatenda, Guru Mwewang. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, have a great night. Thank you. All right, so that's uh, Tapiwa Zivira, who is a journalist in uh, Zimbabwe, uh, talking about uh, the new requirement that returning residents uh, to Zimbabwe are going to have to quarantine for 14 days at their expense uh, if they want to go to Zim from an Omicron um, originating country.